Live court footage shows Y&W Melly laughing and giggling while people are deciding whether or not his life is going to be taken away for the murder of his two homies. It's a scary sight to see, and people are starting to wonder if life even means anything to him. It's clear as day that Melly is not taking the entire process seriously enough. And that begs the question, will it matter in the end? Here's what we can say about it as of now. In the chilling events that unfolded in October of 2018, Y&W Demons, accompanied by his close companions Anthony Deion Andre Williams, known as YNW Sack Chaser, Christopher Thomas Jr., known as YNW Juvie, and Cortland Malik Henry, known as YNW Bortman, converged at a residence owned by a local rapper to participate in filming of a music video. Little did they know that this gathering would soon be marred by tragedy. Following the conclusion of their time at the location, Juvie and Sack Chaser found themselves in dire hands of fate, as they were fatally struck by gunshots. It was Bortland who assumed the harrowing responsibility of transporting their lifeless bodies to a nearby hospital, claiming that their deaths were the result of a drive-by shooting that occurred in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Astonishingly, despite the weight of their childhood friend's recent murders, both Melly and Portland proceeded to make an appearance in a music video the very next day, as scheduled. However, the wheels of justice soon turned, and a grand jury indictment was handed down, charging them both with the calculated first-degree murders of Sack and Juvie. Subsequently, on February 13, 2019, both of them were apprehended and taken into custody. Melly, staunchly maintaining his innocence, entered a plea of not guilty. The legal proceedings commenced. The case stands as a chilling testament to the darkest corners of human nature and the pursuit of justice in the face of unspeakable crimes. It took five years for the state to make a case and unroll the trial against Melly but it is finally in action. With the weight of the accusations hanging heavy in the air, the long-awaited trial of Melly commenced its initial phase on April 11, 2023, as the intricate process of jury selection unfolded. The selection of individuals who would ultimately hold Melly's fate in their hands proved to be a crucial step in the pursuit of justice. After the careful assembly of the jury, the trial officially commenced on June 12, 2023, marking a significant milestone in the legal proceedings. Charged with seeking the ultimate form of punishment, prosecution spared no effort in their quest to obtain the death penalty for Melly, underscoring the gravity of the alleged crimes and the profound impact they had on the community. As the trial progresses, the courtroom becomes a stage where evidence is presented, testimonies are heard, and the delicate balance between guilt and innocence hangs in the balance. The eyes of the public and the weight of the legal system converge as the pursuit of truth and the quest for justice unfold in the backdrop of this high-stakes trial. We ride that cause a disaster. My chopper preaching real fast like a pastor. Turn to a ghost, now they calling them cast. But like a book, we on the net chat. You ain't got no juice cause you lost your adapter. Now let us delve deeper into the solemn proceedings of YNW Melly's double murder trial. The gravity of the situation cannot be understated, as the defendant stands accused of the brutal slaying of two individuals, and the state adamantly asserts that YNW Melly is a ruthless and cold blooded killer, while the defense counters challenging the state's ability to substantiate their claims. On the fateful night of October 26, 2018, the four individuals depart a recording studio together at 3.19 a.m., captured on surveillance footage as they entered a gray SUV. Over an hour later, Bortland arrived at an emergency room with Juvie and Sack Chaser, lifeless in the vehicle. Curiously, Melly was not present, and Bortland claimed that they had fallen victim to a drive-by shooting. However, his unscathed state raised suspicion. Bortland faces separate charges while Melly confronts the possibility of the death penalty a groundbreaking prospect under the new lowered threshold in Florida law. Previously, a unanimous 12-0 jury vote was required, but now a vote of 8-4 to four is sufficient. In furtherance of a criminal gang. So what you will learn from the evidence, from the Instagram, from the private messages, was that Jamel Demons is a member of the G-Shine Blood Set. This is not a stage personality. This is not an actor that's playing a character. This was his real life. The trial commenced with the prosecution's opening statements delivered by Assistant State Attorney Christine Bradley. With conviction, she portrayed Melly as a merciless perpetrator, alleging that he callously murdered his two friends. To substantiate this narrative, she presented a chilling account of events. At 4.35 a.m. on October 26, 2018, Bortland arrived at Memorial Miramar Hospital, his vehicle housing the lifeless bodies of Sack, Chaser, and Juvie riddled with bullet wounds. As the trial progressed, evidence emerged that contradicted Bortland's initial 
initial claims of a drive-by shooting. Prosecutors argued that Melly's involvement in a gang, coupled with a seemingly incriminating Instagram message, amounted to a confession. Context played a significant role in the interpretation of this message, illustrating the nuances that influenced its meaning. To perform their mission of pursuing justice. But that's not what occurred here. What they will bring you is a case the defense, led by attorney David Howard, countered the prosecution's claim, asserting the inability to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. Howard cast doubt on the investigation's credibility, questioning the motives and tunnel vision of Detective Murray, who allegedly fixated on Melly as the sole perpetrator. He suggested that the investigation lacked trustworthiness and highlighted the incompetence discovered three years later, leading to a fresh examination of the case. The defense sought to undermine the prosecution's position by challenging the forensic evidence, including the absence of the murder weapon and the possibility of multiple firearms involved. The trajectory and angles of the shots fired were also called into question, as well as the reliability of gunshot residue testing. The second week of the trial has been marred by controversy, with allegations of prosecutorial misconduct and the emergence of new evidence that could link the rapper to the crime. The focus shift to cell phone evidence, which plays a crucial role in many trials today. FBI Special Agent Brendan Collins testified about the analysis of two phones associated with Melly and one of the victims. The prosecution argues that the cell phone data places Melly in close proximity to the victims shortly before they were found dead. However, the defense raised doubts about the accuracy of the location data and questioned whether Melly was the sole user of the phone in question. Another significant piece of evidence discussed during the trial was DNA analysis. The prosecution presented DNA evidence suggesting Melly's presence in the car where the shootings took place. However, the defense pointed out that Melly's DNA did not match other items tested, raising doubts about his direct involvement in the crime. Throughout the trial, there has been instances of procedural issues and disputes between the prosecution and defense. One such incident involved the state conducting a new test on evidence without sharing the results with the defense promptly. The judge criticized the prosecution for not adhering to the principle of fairness and full disclosure. The prosecution also sought to establish a motive for the killings by highlighting Melly's alleged affiliation with the G-Shine Bloods gang. Detective Polo testified about Melly's social media posts, videos, and references to the gangs in his songs, suggesting a connection between the rapper and the criminal organization. However, the defense questioned whether his portrayal was genuine or merely a persona created for social media. As the trial progresses, the prosecution aims to prove Melly's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt and potentially secure a conviction with the possibility of the death penalty. Meanwhile, the defense challenges the evidence presented and raises doubts about Melly's involvement in the crime. The outcome of this trial will have significant implications for both Melly's future and the justice system as a whole. The sole witness on the 28th of June was a meticulous analyst who painstakingly reconstructed the events, debunking the notion of a drive-by shooting. An intriguing detail was found on YNW Juby's body during the postpartum checkup, namely an injury to his left cheek, marked by stippling, indicative of close-range fire. The shooting expert took the stand, elaborating on how investigators determined the origin and trajectory of the shot fired. As we piece together the puzzle, it becomes evident that the shots did not originate from a passing vehicle, but rather from the driver's side back seat. But how much time transpired between the fatal shots and the meticulously planned cover-up? It was a crucial period, allowing the victims' hearts to cease beating and circulation to cease. The evidence presented raises questions about the authenticity of the depicted firearm usage. However, the witness could not recall witnessing such a scene during his career, adding an air of intrigue to the trial. In a stunning development, recently unearthed recordings shed light on the fateful night, with Melly allegedly committing the unthinkable act. These audio recordings capture conversations between Melly and Bortlett as they recount the events to the police. According to their narrative, as they departed from the recording studio, their vehicle came under gunfire from another car. Tragically, their two friends fell victim to the bullets and succumbed to their injuries. In a state of panic and desperation, they rushed the bodies to the hospital. However, as investigators meticulously scrutinized the details, suspicions began to emerge, casting doubt on the honesty of their account. In these revealing recordings, Bortland's uneasiness becomes obvious as he recounts the story. There's a discernible undercurrent of nervousness, suggesting that the narrative being presented may not align with the true sequence of events. The investigators find themselves confronted with a web of uncertainties, raising doubts about the accuracy and authenticity of the story that unfolds. What can I tell you if I'm ducking for my life? This piece of evidence could be crucial in the trial, as this story tells a lot about Bortland and the fact that that he lied could be mentioned in the upcoming days. On the other hand, we have yet to see Bortland testify in front of court. 
people know that if there is a piece of evidence that can undoubtedly be used to put Melly behind bars or even worse, it would be Portland's testimony. He's the only one who could seal Melly's fate once and for all. If Portland takes the stand and points the finger at Melly and says that he did the crime, there's a little that the defense could do in order to save Melly from being found guilty. On the other hand, law experts believe that Melly's defense team will eventually start putting the blame on Portland. As the weeks go by and the trial becomes less tacit, it's becoming more and more apparent that the state does in fact have strong evidence against Melly, even though this is a circumstantial case. People wonder how Melly is dealing with the ongoing trial process and whether or not he's in fear for his life. One thing about his reaction so far is very clear. He's not following the courtroom guidelines that most lawyers advise their clients to follow. In fact, some say he's doing the exact opposite. On multiple occasions, Melly acted out of line and somewhat inappropriate even. Believe it or not, Melly even laughed in front of the courtroom while a piece of evidence against him in a death penalty case was being presented. He was even seen blowing kisses at one point and sending them to all the people inside. If that doesn't tell you something about Melly, then nothing does. People think that this was nothing short of a foolish move. The jury sees everything, and they will not forget his behavior once his time is up and the ultimate decision has to be made. One comment online said, Laughing during your murder trial is a stupid thing to do. Yeah, it isn't evidence you murdered someone, but it just looks bad. The jury is only human. It could work against you. And another person wrote, The jury is watching him the whole time. In a gripping moment within the courtroom, the mother of YNW Juvie, Leandra Phillips, took her place on the witness stand. With a solemn determination in her eyes, she embarked on a poignant testimony that would shed light on the events surrounding the fateful night. Juvie's mother pointed with conviction at her son, unmistakably identifying him amidst the surveillance footage captured outside the New Era recording studio in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The jury's gaze was fixed upon the screen, bearing witness to the presence of Melly, Juvie, Sack Chaser, and Bortland as they departed from the studio on that fateful day. Assistant State Attorney Christine Bradley skillfully wove the narrative, drawing attention to the significance of the video recorded prior to the tragic double murder in the early hours of October 26, 2018. The footage unveiled Melly taking his place in the left rear seat of the Jeep vehicle, Sack Chaser occupying the front passenger seat, and Juvie positioned in the right rear seat. Guided by her deep maternal bond, Bradley turned to Juvie's mother, beseeching her to confirm the identity of her beloved son amidst this haunting visual account. It was a hard pill to swallow, and the video gets increasingly more painful to watch. People feel sorry for the loss, and they express their sorrow online as well. My sincerest condolences to his mom. Hope they get the justice they deserve. This trial is nothing short of a tragic tale, one that has YNW Melly as the protagonist. Once a rising star in the music industry, now Melly faces the outcome of his own actions. This haunting tale serves as a reminder of the complex and often tumultuous intersection between artistry, personal choices, and the consequences that follow. The journey still didn't reach its conclusion within the walls of the courtroom, but the story will continue to resonate, urging us to reflect upon the choices we make, the bonds we forge, and the responsibility we carry in safeguarding the fragile threads that connect us all.